All right, so this is a really good example of a um, of a, a type of problem uh, that we that we may be asked to do, and actually a really good example of um, how the correct uh, choice of of coordinates can really help you out. Um, so you have a, this was a class that we talked about in pro in, in uh, this problem we talked about in class. It's a long uniform bat beam of mass 10 kilograms supported by two ropes that are 10 meters apart. Um, the center of the mass beam is halfway through two ropes. Um, so first, let's just start by drawing a free body diagram of the um, of this uh, this this beam. Uh, the first thing you have is you have the force of gravity of the beam, which is right in the middle. All right, so that's um, you know five meters from the left. Then I'm going to draw all our coordinates from here. I'm kind of giving away what I'm going to do, but um, let's just do that for now. Um, so we also have uh, the normal force here. Um, and the normal force here, okay, um, which is going along that rope. And then, of course, we have the force of gravity. So, so the beam, and this is the force of gravity of the man. Okay. Um, uh, so um, we're asked how far a person can walk to the left before this thing basically flips over and and tips basically the guy off of the off of the um the board. Um, we talked a little bit about this in class, but the, one of the things that you're going to notice as you're looking across here, what happens, how do we know when this thing is going to start to tip? The way we know this thing is going to start to tip is as soon as that happens, this rope here is going to go slack, all right? Um, so, so that rope basically is going to have no tension on it anymore. Um, that's going to be an indication that the thing has finally started to lift. Um, and and that that's um, and that's actually the, the point we're interested in when when we're looking at how far the person can walk before before it does. So as long as there's tension in this rope, the the guy isn't flipping off of it. Um, so we can see that actually this question is the same as asking us to solve this statics problem, but to solve this statics problem when there's no normal force. It's basically the equivalent question that we're being asked. So this is kind of our new problem, which we have now our three forces that we have here. And then we're trying to solve for that. Um, one really good question is, what? Uh, where am I going to set my um, origin? I think it's pretty obvious uh, here that uh, the thing we know the least about is the normal force. And so we want to set our origin right there for our torque problems. And you see already that I've kind of defined everything um, in terms of uh, the origin. So I say that my, my, um, my force of gravity from the beam is 5 meters from the, the, the um, uh, the, the origin right there at the center of mass, which we I already said is halfway between the two beams. And um, we, uh, we're trying to find this x, which is just the distance to the left that that person can walk. Um, so it turns out this is going to be really easy. Uh, our sum of torques is just going to give us the distance um, r uh, um, uh, of, the, um, of the person or the man. Right, let's let's not give. We don't need. We don't need genders here. Let's just do the person. Um, the distance of the person times the force of gravity of the person. All right. Um, and then we. Um, and then we're also going to have uh, the. Um, I'm not going to worry about signs quite yet. Um, the distance of the um, the beam, basically the center of mass of the beam, and the force of gravity of the beam. And we don't need angles in any of these, any sine of thetas, because they're both perpendicular to our r's. So in this case, our r is this way, and that makes it perpendicular in the same case. In this case, that's r, and the force is perpendicular. And that's just equal to zero. We just, that's all of our forces. Uh, we, don't have a, a, we don't have a torque from the normal force, because the normal force is right at our origin. And again, that second normal force uh, doesn't exist whenever we start to flip. Um, OK, so that's, that's everything there. Um, now let's talk about the signs of things. Um, uh, so let's look at um, the force of g of the person. If again we draw a circle around our origin, there's there's our origin right there. If we draw a circle around the origin um, for the force of gravity of the person, we're going in a um, in a uh, counterclockwise direction, and so that's going to be positive. If we look at the force of gravity of the beam. Um, and we start drawing that around the origin. That's going in a clockwise direction. Um, and so the force of gravity of the beam is actually going to be negative. 
And so I'm going to go ahead and make that negative instead of positive. Oops, negative instead of positive. Huh, didn't seem to like to do that. Okay. Yeah, negative. Okay. Um, so now uh, it's basically just left to solve this. So we get r of the person uh, times force of gravity of the person equal to r of the beam times force of gravity of the beam, um, or r of the person is equal to r of the beam force of gravity of the beam by the force of gravity of the person. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in my uh, 5 meters for RB, um, my uh, 10 kilograms for the beam times 9.8 meters per second squared, and then I'm just going to go ahead and put in my mass, so 70 kilograms, um, and that's also times 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, you notice these actually get crossed out. And we just get um, uh, that it's just uh, the, how far the person can walk is just uh, 5, so 50, 5 by 70. Um, and so this is 0 0.71 meters. And so that's how far I can walk. The problem is it's a pretty light beam. And so I can't walk very far, basically, before I flip that beam. Um, and that's what I've called X here. Um, so that's you know, X. Um, and so that's how far I can walk. Uh, again, pretty straightforward problem. You just set up your torques and then you go. Um, there are other ways you can do it. Uh, people pointed out, uh, someone in one of my classes pointed out that you could write that the normal, if you look at all the y-axis, you could write that the normal force is equal to um, the force of gravity of the person plus the force of gravity of the beam. Um, and you know, if you did your t origin in a different place, you could maybe combine this equation with your torque equation to solve it. But the, the way that I showed you is the, the quickest way to do it um, and uh, just gets you the answer right away. Okay, hope that was helpful and uh, I'll see you in class.